When we look at trigonometric functions for the first time, it's defining them in the aspect of taking a trig function of an acute angle in a right triangle. Now as you go through the information for trigonometry, there'll be a lot of different extensions that we can do off of this, but here we're going to look at specifically the basic definitions of the trig functions of an acute angle. So definitions of trigonometric functions of an acute angle theta. Well, if you have a right triangle and we are looking at in that right triangle, noticing where the right angle is, remember always that the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. And then the other two sides of a right triangle, the ones that make up the right angle, are called the legs of the triangle. So I have a leg here and a leg there. Now, if I have a 90 degree angle in my triangle for my right triangle, then the total of 180 degrees, subtract that 90, gives me 90 degrees left to share amongst these two angles. And not necessarily fairly, one could be smaller than the other and that's often the case. When we're looking at that then, 180 minus 90 is 90, and so when I split up 90 between two different angles, I'm going to always have an angle that's between zero and 90 degrees for these other two. So they are acute angles in a right triangle. Now, depending on which angle I'm focusing my attention on will determine what the side names are for those sides that aren't the hypotenuse, the legs. So let's say that I use this angle up here as my theta. So I'm going to concentrate on that acute angle for how we're looking at what the notation is in the definitions. Well, with this angle being the theta, the one that I'm concentrating or focusing my attention on, then the side that helps make that theta with the hypotenuse, that's the adjacent side. And then the side opposite that angle, the one that's not a ray of the angle itself, is called the opposite side. If I were to concentrate on this acute angle, the hypotenuse would still be the hypotenuse but then this side would be adjacent to that angle and this side would be opposite to that angle. So you always wanna just kinda of make a little notation to yourself when you have an angle that's marked in your triangle to which angle um, you have that you're taking the trig functions of and then write in what the hypotenuse, the opposite side, the adjacent side, etc. Now back to the definitions of the trig functions, the sine of the angle theta is defined to equal, so you have to have the trig function of an angle and then equal, and it's a ratio of two of the sides of the right triangle in this definition. So it's equal to the opposite, the length of the opposite side, divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite of the side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of the angle, is equal to the length of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. The tangent of the acute angle is defined to be the ratio of the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. The cosecant of the angle is equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. The secant of the angle is defined to equal the ratio of the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side, and then the cotangent of the angle is equal to the adjacent side length divided by the length of the, hip of the opposite side. So that gives us our definitions of our six trigonometric functions of a right triangle. To practice these, they give us examples where we have a right triangle and we have two of the three sides that are given to us and some angle that they're telling us to use as the angle we're wanting to find the six trigonometric ratios of. So one of our first tasks is going to be, we'll find whatever the length of the missing side length is. So with the right triangle, remember we have the Pythagorean theorem. 
And the Pythagorean theorem says that if you take one of the legs and square the value, plus the other leg and square the value, you get the hypotenuse squared. So in this example, I have five is a leg, my unknown value here is a leg, and then 13 is opposite the right angle, so that's the hypotenuse. So I have five squared plus the other leg squared is equal to 13 squared. So five squared is 25 plus the other leg squared is equal to 13 squared is 169. Subtract 25 from both sides. I get the square of that other leg is equal to 144. And when I take the square root of both sides, I get that that missing leg value is 12. And remember, I don't need to do plus or minus because we're talking about the side length of a triangle and that's always positive. So we have 12. Okay, so now here's my angle alpha. And if you're not familiar with these symbols for the Greek letters, just make sure you go through and find a alphabet of the Greek letters and look at the symbol, say the name over and over just to practice so that you get more comfortable with, comfortable with it. All right, so the sign, now I know they use theta in the definition, but in this problem, the name of the angle is alpha. So the sine of alpha, now with this angle alpha, my always side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. The side that helps make it is the adjacent side. And the side that is opposite it is the opposite side. So the sine of the angle is the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse. So for this angle, that's going to be 5 over 13. The cosine of that alpha is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So 12 over 13. The tangent of alpha is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So that's going to be 5 divided by 12. Then the cosecant of this angle alpha is equal to the hypotenuse over the opposite side. So that's 13 over 5. The secant of alpha is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So that's going to be 13 over 12. And the cotangent of alpha is the adjacent side divided by the opposite side. So it is the adjacent side divided by the opposite side, so 12 fifths. Okay, let's do the next example. Here I have my angle alpha. And in this example, I have my right angle here so the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. So I have two of the legs measurement and I'm trying to find the hypotenuse measurement. So for this one, I have leg squared plus leg squared is a hypotenuse squared. So that gives me nine squared plus 40 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So nine squared is 81. 40 squared is 1,600 is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Then add those together, I get 1,681 is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And then taking the square root of both sides, I get the hypotenuse is equal to 41. And now I can go through and find the values of the six trigonometric functions of this angle alpha. I have my hypotenuse is opposite the 90 degree angle. 
and then the other side that helps make alpha is the adjacent side and the side that's opposite alpha is the opposite side. And again, that's just good bookkeeping so that if you get distracted and then you lose track of your thought process, you can like refer back to it with its name as well. So now we have the sine of alpha is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, so 40 over 41. The cosine of alpha is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so that's going to be 9 over 41. The tangent of alpha is equal to our opposite side length divided by the adjacent side length, so that's going to be 40 over 9. And then the cosecant of alpha is equal to the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. So that's 41 divided by 40. The secant of alpha is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So that's going to be 41 over 9. So then the cotangent of alpha is going to be the adjacent side over the opposite side. So that will give us 9 over 40. Now looking at these, there's a few things that are going to happen later on in the information that actually we can start seeing occur when we put in the names of the sides for our ratios for our trig functions and even more so when we're looking at our numbers. Notice that the sine of the angle and the cosecant of the angle are just reciprocals of each other in their ratios, definitions. So while I came back and looked at the triangle each time by the definition just to get going on thinking of it that way, once I have the sine of the angle I'm focusing on's ratio, when I realize that, yeah, the cosecant was just the reciprocal of the sine of that angle, so when I did the cosecant of alpha, I could have just looked at the ratio for the sine of the alpha and done the reciprocal. So that would have been a much faster process when I organize writing them all out where I've got the sine of the angle and right across from it, it's a trig function that has the reciprocal definition, which is the cosecant of the angle and the cosine of the angle and the secant of the angle and the tangent of the angle and the cotangent of the angle. If I organize it that way, then I can get some more strength and confidence that I'm getting these right values by remembering that reciprocal relationship between them. It also helps me for work that we're going to do later on that really capitalizes on a lot of these relationships between them. Now, when we look at these ratios, we always do want to give them in their simplified form. And all of these um, were rational numbers that worked out with the Pythagorean theorem. They might not always do that. Sometimes you'll have an irrational part of that right triangle, in which case then sometimes we're going to have radicals that end up in a denominator of a fraction and we'll need to rationalize the denominator to be able to leave it in its simplified form. If there are any common factors between the numerators and the denominators, we want to do that. Um, but you don't want to go to like mixed numbers um, and basically we don't want to go to decimals very often unless they're exact. So keep everything exact unless it tells you to approximate within a um, problem. But anyway, that gives us the definitions of the trigonometric functions of an acute angle theta in our right triangle. And um, later on, we're going to apply this to special angles as well as look at applications of right triangle tri